In this week's video, I've got five really cool photography tips. I've got something if you're a Canon user, I've got something for you if you're a Nikon user. If you're an iPhone photographer, I've got something for you as well. So please stick around. Hi, Paul here from Photogenius. Welcome to my channel, which is all about helping you get more from your digital camera so you can take amazing photos. Every single week, I upload new videos, mostly photography tutorials where I share tips and tricks. I do occasional gear reviews as well. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out. In this video, I've got five really cool photography tips that I wanna share with you. So let's begin with tip number one, which is a really good tip for those of you that like taking photos at night time or maybe doing low light photography. So a good way of taking photos when there isn't much light is to put the camera on a tripod so it doesn't move and then leave the shutter open longer. This is called a long exposure. A tripod is an essential bit of kit because it's really important that the camera doesn't move. If the camera moves between the shutter opening and closing, your picture will be blurry because the camera will record the movement of the camera, which in turn will look like blur. So if you haven't got one yet, a tripod is an essential bit of kit if you want to do low light or nighttime photography. And I've listed some of my picks in the links below this video. Now, even though your camera's on a tripod, it does not mean it's sturdy. Last night, I went out to take some photos of the moon. So I went down to the local bay and there were a whole bunch of people out that night with massive telescopes taking uh, photos and looking at Jupiter and Saturn, which were aligning. It was a once in a lifetime event, apparently. I think it's called the Bethlehem Star or the Christmas Star. Um, so it was pretty busy down there. And all I wanted to do was take a photo of the moon. So I set this uh, Canon camera here up on a tripod with a um, 70 to 300 millimeter telephoto lens. By the way, the cheapest Canon telephoto lens you can buy. And um, I got set to take some photos of the moon. And the first few photos were terrible. And this was because it was quite windy down by the bay and the wind was was causing the tripod and the camera to move very slightly. So my tip is, just because you've got a full size tripod and you can extend it this high, it doesn't mean you have to extend it to the max. Simply lowering the camera, dropping the tripod down to lower the center of gravity, fix the problem. And I was able to get a nice picture of the moon. So tip number one is, if you've got a tripod, you don't have to extend it to the max. The lower the tripod is to the ground, the more stable it will be. Now there is a question that I get asked a lot in the comments section here on YouTube and that is how do I transfer my images from my camera to my PC or laptop or maybe mobile device? So tip number two is for you guys. So a popular way of transferring images from your camera to a mobile device such as a smartphone is to use an app and the camera's Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. All camera manufacturers now offer free apps that can connect to cameras that have wireless connectivity. And as a bonus, the app may also offer options such as remote camera control. So the main benefit of using this method is that you can transfer images on the go at any time. But one of the disadvantages of using this option is that certainly with the cameras I use, you can only transfer JPEG images. So if you're shooting raw files or making movies, these will not transfer wirelessly because the files are too big. So for me, a better option if you're on the move is to use a card reader. As an iPhone user, I use an SD to lightning adapter. You can also buy these for Android devices as well. Now, depending on which camera and device you're using, you may be able to transfer your raw images this way too. I keep one of these adapters in my bag at all times. A third option is to use the cable that comes with the camera to directly connect the camera to a laptop or desktop computer. You can then easily drag images from the card to the computer. The fourth option and my preferred way of transferring and saving images is to use a card reader like this. If I'm on the go, I use this Satechi adapter, which has an SD card slot, as well as USB and USB-C ports as well. I'll put a link in the description below. Now I often travel with my laptop, so this for me is the ideal solution. Now, before we get on to the next tip, I just want to quickly mention the t-shirt I'm wearing. This is one of a series of t-shirts that have been exclusively designed for fans and subscribers of the Photogenius channel here on YouTube. I've been working alongside our graphic designer on creating some really cool t-shirt designs. One of my favorites is the Golden Hour tee, but let me know which design you like best in the comments below. 
Purchasing a Photogenius t-shirt directly supports this channel and helps me create more videos to help you take better photos. Now tip number three is for those of you that love taking photos with your iPhone but should also work with most other smartphones. And this tip is for those of you that want to do the blur effect just using your phone. This image was taken using an iPhone. I really love the blur of the water and this is actually easy to do using the iPhone's live mode. To shoot a live image, just click on the icon at the top of the screen prior to taking a photo. Now, when you review your images, you will see that they move. Now, the trick here is to choose an image, swipe up to reveal some hidden options, swipe to the left and choose long exposure, and hey presto, a really cool trick. Now, if you've got a Canon camera and you've ever wondered what this little bit of rubber attached to the strap is for, tip number four is going to answer this for you. To take night photos like these, you will need a tripod because the camera's shutter will be open longer. Now the problem here can be light entering the camera via the viewfinder. So for this reason, some camera manufacturers like Canon give you something that you can use to cover the viewfinder. All you do is slide the viewfinder rubber eyepiece off and replace it with the cover. Another and sometimes easier option is simply to drape a lens cloth over the viewfinder. So on to the final tip and the reason why I've got so many cameras here in front of me today. Tip number five is to learn your camera's shortcuts. Now every camera is different, but most cameras will have a shortcut or maybe even a series of shortcuts that allow you to do the things that you do the most really quickly and efficiently. Let me give you some examples. If you've got a Nikon D3400 or similar camera, turn it round and see if there's a function button on the side. If there is, hold it in with your thumb, turn the dial on the back of the camera, and you can now quickly and easily change the ISO. This is a great time saver. Another cool feature on the Nikons, this time this is a D3500, is the camera's inbuilt manual. Now if you press menu and you select an option such as focus mode here and you're not sure what it means, press the button with the question mark next to it and it will explain what this means. So if we go to menu and choose another option and press the question mark button, again, it explains what autofocus area mode is. So this can be really, really handy. Plus, if you're in the manual modes, you can use the plus minus button on the top to do a couple of things. Hold it down, turn the dial to change the aperture. If you're in program or priority modes, holding the button down and turning the dial, will change your exposure compensation. Now, if you're a Canon user, definitely one of the best shortcuts is to use the Q button. If you go into the menu, there's heaps of different options and a much quicker way of selecting the key features of this camera is to use the Q button and then select the options like so. It's really, really easy. Now, there's a really cool custom function on these cameras as well. This is the 1500D or T7. If I press the flash button, it pops up the flash. Now what you can do if you don't use flash is you can go into the menu, choose custom functions, look for flash button function settings, press set, choose ISO speed, press set. And now when you press the flash button, instead of popping up the flash, it allows you to change the ISO. Now there is an ISO button on the back of this camera as well, but some Canon cameras don't have this button. So this is a really neat little trick. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and picked up some cool tips. Don't forget I put videos out every single week and they're all designed to help you get more from your digital camera. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. It also really helps the channel if you give this video a thumbs up. If you want to find out more about the t-shirt I'm wearing and any other Photogenius merchandise, you'll find a link in the description below the video. Purchasing Photogenius merchandise directly supports this channel and helps me bring you more videos. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya. Bye.